Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the April 16th edition of Wa TV. We are coming to you today from Studio 22. I'm Gerald. And I'm Alexis, and today we're going to be t looking at another small local business, hear a student's testimony, and give you a few announcements. But first, Simon and Justin spent some time talking with Ms. Kiner. Check it out. Hey guys, Justin here, and um, just for now, I had an interview with Mrs. Kiner, and to be honest with you, she made a big impact in my life, and not only mine, but others as well. Um, I am more open to her than I am to my own mom. Um, yeah, sorry mom, I love you. But enjoy! Uh, Mrs. Kiner, what brings you to mentoring other students? Well, it's all about relationships for me. I love people. Um, I love to hear their stories. I love to hear about their ups and their downs and kind of share part of my life with them and, and just kind of just, just hang out with kids. Um, I love the teaching part of my day, but the best part is when I get to hang out with students or a student and talk to him or her about what's going on in their lives. So that's the best part of my day. And um, did you have a mentor growing up? Um, I did. I had several. I've been in sports pretty much my whole life, all through college, and um, I had a lot of great coaches who would, um, I guess, mentor me in a way where um, kind of helped me through. I had some pretty rough spots in college with my family situation, and I had a couple of um, times where I just needed somebody to listen to me and kind of help me get back on track. So keeping me grounded. So yeah, I would say mostly it came from my coaches um, all the way through from high school, all the way through college. Yeah. And what is the most important characteristic of mentoring someone? <sighs> wow. I think first and foremost, you need to be a good listener. Um, because mentoring is not about somebody bringing you a problem and you offering a fix or fixing it. It's just being able to listen. Um, I think giving them some good guidance, speaking some truth into their lives with love. Um, I hope all the kids that I, I talk to know that I truly care about them as a person. I'm not there to try to um, direct their lives, but maybe give them advice. Um, an old person like me has a lot of good experiences and some tough ones maybe I could share. So I think just listening and, and letting them kind of talk about uh, what's going on in their lives, really. So guys, if you have something to talk about or need someone to talk to, Mrs. Kiner here is here to listen to you. So thanks guys for joining us today. Have a good one. Thanks, Justin. We want to thank Ms. Kiner for everything she does for Wheaton Academy. She and other teachers are always willing and ready to listen and mentor. Seek someone and be known. Now let's get to a couple of announcements. There's been an increase of food scraps left after lunch in the atrium, the glass hallway, the main hallway, and the senior lounge. Just a reminder, please throw away all your food items, find a trash can, and leave the space better than you found it. We are entering the spring se season, and we don't need to attract ants and other insects. Thanks for doing your part. Student Council invites the entire student body to our 50s themed sock hop this Friday, April 20th at 7 p.m. The night will include a sock hop, swing dancing, roller skating, and light snacks. Students may bring their own roller blades, but roller skates will be provided in several shifts for students to use. Tickets will be on sale this week during lunch. The pre-sale cost is $10 per student and $20 at the door. Of course, students are also welcome to dress up in 50 styles clothes if they want. One more thing about sock hop. Christian, I know how much you hate attention, but will you go to sock hop with me? <laughs> I'll just let that sit there. <laughs> I, I have no comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> our media art class has been making watch TV stories in class. Today we are going to highlight the work of Tyler Birchie and Tommy Reed. Be prepared to laugh. Hi, this is Tommy from Watch TV. And we know there's a lot of talent in Wien Academy, so we decided to set out, find the funniest person here, and ask them for their best joke. So let's give it a try. We have some good jokes over here, I heard. Why did the teddy bear say no to uh, dessert? Why? Because he was stuffed. That's a good one. What did Della wear? <laughs> what did she? He. Her new jersey. <laughs> All right. Knock knock. Who is there? Yodelay he. 
yodel a hee hoo. <laughs> I didn't know you could yodel talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, no wait, knock knock. Who's there? Who? Who who? What are you, an owl or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! What do you call a really mean old orthodox priest with bad breath? What? A super calloused, fragile mystic hexed with halitosis. I don't even know. Did you hear about the claustrophobic astronaut? No. He just needed a little space. Um, hey Madeline, what's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't remember, but the flag is a big plus. <laughs> big plus, the flag! <laughs> Sir, could we ask you for your best joke? Tommy Reed. There were definitely some winners and some losers in that bunch of jokes. We always want to thank people for being in the videos we make, and a special shout out to Tommy and Tyler for that video. For our In the News segment, Izzy talks about Mr. Waugh. Thanks guys. We had a great evening on Saturday night, celebrating talent, but more importantly, raising money and awareness for Kids Alive. With over 500 people in attendance, the 11 guys performed their unique acts. The in-house and live stream audience had a chance to vote through text message for their favorite guy. We had a tie for third with the tag team of Matthew Oster and DJ Polino performing an act from The Greatest Showman. Seth Wyma also got third place for his math rap. In second place, WaTV's very own Quinn Partain and Will Pritchard performed a beach ball routine that had the audience watching in awe as they kept the ball from dropping. And being crowned Mr. Wa, Cole Bowling and Max Dominguez used their talents to create a late night show routine and finished with an epic lip sync battle. Congratulations to all who participated, served, and attended. Back to you guys. Thanks, Izzy. Our next segment highlights another small local business, Noah Wilding and Izzy Smith Report. Well, Catizo is both a tea line and a cafe. The word itself means a new creation or a new formation. And um, one day I had a bunch of high schoolers over. They were all Wheaton Academy kids when my own children were still attending. And um, I said, help me come up with a name. So we looked at a bunch of different names that were um, international uh, words for the word creation because we wanted something with the creator. And we came up with Katizo uh, because it's Greek for a new creation, help to awaken people as we begin to share on deeper levels. What we're really trying to do is build cross-cultural community. One of our taglines are, uh, we build uh, community one cup at a time, and we like to pair art, tea, and culture. So for the artists in the crowd, we use all forms of art, and then upstairs we have a great wall of hope, and we like to let people know we'll turn a hope into a prayer. At my heart, I just love connecting with people, and I love connecting with people who I, I feel um, uh, are sort of far from God. I am a follower of Jesus and I do feel that whatever you do in life is going to be a reflection of who you are. And so I hope that when people come here they feel the welcome that Jesus would want us to give. I hope they feel the hope that Jesus would want us to portray. Catizo is right next to Wheaton Bowl, right down Geneva Road. If you get a chance, stop by and tell them you are from Wheaton Academy. I'm sure they would love your support. For our next video, Alexis Savage caught up with Abby Stenzel to talk about a topic we all need to hear about, waiting. All right, hey guys, I'm Abby, and I've been talking to a lot of people at WA recently, and I found that one thing that a lot of people are really struggling with here is the concept of waiting. Um, I think waiting can sometimes be a good thing because we wait to hear from God, and we're asking him questions and just trying to get wisdom on what to do with things. But I think a lot of times we don't use the concept of waiting very well and very actively. Um, when you're waiting for God and when you're waiting to become strong in your faith, um, you have to be active in that and you have to be reading your Bible and praying and asking people for advice instead of just sitting there and being like, I can become strong in my faith when I when something happens but I'm not going to until I go on this mission trip and something crazy happens or like something bad happens or I just mysteriously hear from God but God is talking to us all the time we just actually have to listen and if you're struggling with an, finding an answer from God or 
struggling with hearing him, then read your Bible. Reading your Bible is so important. You actually have to read it and try to understand what he's what he's saying to you through scripture and you shouldn't wait to become strong in your faith and you shouldn't wait for anything big to happen just go home and read your bible consistently and try to be active in your faith and just change your life based on him and then you'll your life will change and now for our spring sports report here's quinn partain Thanks guys, with this cold weather, we had a lot of cancellations last week, but we were still able to get in a number of quality games. Last Wednesday, our boys tennis team beat last year's third place team in state, Bennett Academy. With wins at second singles and first and second doubles, the Warriors beat them three to two. Our first doubles team of Owen Sutron and Graham Shelton won an epic three set match, winning 6-4, 1-6, 6-1. Our girls softball team fell to one and two on the season, after losing two games this past week. They have a chance to get back in rhythm with three home games this week on Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Get over to the field at 4.30 and show your support. Track and Field had a meet at St. Francis with the boys and at Fenton with the girls last Tuesday. Notable performances came from Ryan Whitstock with a second place finish in the 1600 meters with a time of five minutes and seven seconds. For the girls, Karen Best stayed undefeated in the 300-meter hurdles, and Julia Bleski finished fifth in the 3,200-meter run. And finally, Jared Blackman had a chance to ask people about a popular esports video game that I'm confident enough to challenge anyone in. Check this out. So, uh, TJ, who's the best Mario Kart character? Luigi. Why? Because he throws bananas. Luigi, because he throws bananas? Facts. Yes. Question is, who's the best Mario Kart character? Ooh, that's uh, a tough one. Definitely Princess Peach. She's pretty good. She's my favorite. Um, I'd have to go with Luigi on this one, though. He's a classic. I mean, Princess Peach is better, but that's all right. <laughs> OK, sure, <laughs> sure. Oh, easy, Toad. Easy. Baby Luigi or Baby Mario? It's Yoshi, of course. Let's go. I mean, it's, it's Luigi. Metal Mario. He's the best Mario Kart character. Bowser Jr. Baby Mario with that bullet bike. Yoshi. Yoshi? Yeah. Who's the best Mario Kart character? Oh, uh, King Boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's garbage. Um, I always did Peach. Princess Peach. Yeah. Oh, I don't play Mario oh, Kart. Baby Mario. <laughs> Yoshi. Sonic. <laughs> Mario, because it's his game. To wrap up today's episode, here's Simon on four things you need to know. Thanks, Alexis. Let's get to our four things. Number one, Mr. Wah took place this past Saturday night. Colin Max won the title, and we have it all on live stream. Check it out at livestream.com slash live video. Number two, our annual sock hop is happening on Friday night at 7 p.m. Buy tickets ahead of time for $10 or at the door for $20 each. Number three, our chapel speakers for the week are Project Lead Discipleship on Tuesday and Jeff Frazier on Friday. And number four, we have a lot of athletic events you can go to this week. Find out when and where, go to athletics.weenacademy.org. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TheRealWatTV for information or to leave comments. To finish off our episode today, we want to leave you with one last segment, Dancing Mondays. Hello, it's Hannah Curl from Live TV. And this time, we're gonna get funky. funky. Everybody clap your, clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? But I've been from Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married a long time ago. Evolutions are time. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs>
Black Beatles in the city Be back immediately to confiscate the money <laughs> They do the Harlem shit